Good evening. We're going to call our Community Relations and Student Life Safety and Wellness Committee meeting to order at this time. Do we have any public comment on the agenda? Okay, hearing none at this time. Hearing none, we're going to begin our agenda for this evening, starting with an overview of our 2023-2024 school calendar. Drew, if you could scroll up a little bit and pull up. Uh, so it's never too early to talk about uh, the 23-24 school year. I didn't think I'd be saying that <laughs> at this time. But if you remember this past spring, the board mm. was talking about the potential of adding <laughs> additional holidays to our school calendar, specifically Diwali uh, and Eid El Fitter. Uh, so I said that we would come back early in this year and look at some drafts of calendars because our parents do need to know uh, if we're contemplating starting before Labor Day or after Labor Day. And it, there's just, uh, we certainly respect all of the holidays uh, in our calendar and want to, um, you know, work them in as best we can. But there's a practicality uh, and we have to have 180 school days. We have to have 990 hours of instruction and uh, for our first through 12th graders and 900 hours for our kindergartners. Um, and we have to have that done by June 30th of every year. And that, that doesn't even mention the snow word, uh, which we do build in some snow days. But we know in this part of the country, we could have some difficult years. So uh, what you have, oh, I don't know why that's so small, but I'm uh, happy to share with our members of the audience after the meeting. I'll just talk about it. I can show you draft copies. You can't have them yet because we can't have them released just yet until the board approves it. But uh, this past year, we obviously started after Labor Day. Um, and this coming year, uh, or excuse me, next school year, Diwali falls on Sunday, November 12th. So that is does not impact the school calendar uh, presently, um, or at least for the 23-24 school year. Eid al-Fitr falls on April 10th, um, and that's the last day of Ramadan. Uh, so that would uh, extend our student year by one day uh, and our teacher, teacher year by one day. So really the conversation is not related around adding, adding holidays for 23-24. It's whether the board wants to consider starting before Labor Day or after day, Labor Day. If we start before Labor Day, um, the first student day, uh, would be, pardon me, August 28th, uh, and we would finish by June 10th, which is a Monday. Uh, we try to stay, I have in my career, tried to stay away from finishing on a Monday. It's the last day of school is generally a half a day, and so, you know, sort of this past year we ended on a Friday. It's just sort of, I think it's very nice for the families, very nice for the kids, and then, like, there's kind of this moment if you leave on a Friday and say, I'll see you for a couple hours on Monday, that's not very exciting. Uh, and obviously if there's snow, that would be extended. If we start after Labor Day, um, we're looking at starting on, uh, the first day of school would be September 5th, a week later, and we would end on June 14th, which is a Friday. Um, so this past year we started after Labor Day. My, my belief would be that we would look at starting after again, if the board is considering starting before, and I said this a few years ago, I would make a two-year decision just so families are aware and they can plan appropriately. But either way, I think we need to identify at a minimum, we should identify either this month or at the latest October uh, when the first day of school is so families can plan. I have, and we have received a few calls already about when it will be. And I think it's very logical. I think folks are trying to lock in potentially some trips that they're planning or some family events. And it's a very logical time to do it near the end of each summer and just kind of get it, get it locked in and, and set up for the following summer. And in the past, um, we have let the community know we're starting before or after Labor Day by when? Uh, it's usually been. The first, we've let them know about the first day no later than November. Okay. And then we have the final draft of the calendar sometime in January. Right, I know, we, but we're very clear to make sure we let people know before after Labor Day. Early. As soon as we can, I just didn't know when that, yeah, we do when the, that was. We do it in the fall as early as possible, and then we sit down with CEA, they review it. We have, there's all types of other things that need to go into the calendar, when conferences are, all those things. Work that out and then get it posted by January. But at least Thanks. families will know. Um, I think you know where I stand on this personally. I just hate to see summer end so early 
um, and nobody's coming to school on Monday. I, I mean, I'm, I just, nobody's really going to show up on Monday. Oh, you mean for the last day of school? For the last day of school. If school ends on a Monday, and nobody's coming. So what's the point, you know, other than to get our days in? Um, so I, I personally am in favor of the after Labor Day unless we run Labor Day is so late that we just can't do it. So that's just my personal opinion and hasn't changed in all these years. Which one of these um, options does, okay, so the, this one, after, before Labor Day, it ends on the 10th, gotcha, okay. Yep, not a major difference for this calendar. I don't think you'll see too much of a difference in the next few years because you'll, you'll notice that Labor Day is moving up in the month of September. It's about four years from now where it drops back to the 6th or 7th where then you're looking at ending around June 20th, June 21st, and that's a challenge, especially if, uh, you know, with additional holidays and then also, you know, you get inclement weather that you could really run into some issues. So when are you looking for a recommendation from the uh, board? Just taking feedback from the board. Um, we can talk about it again on Thursday night, um, you know, if, with the whole board, just as a superintendent's discussion item, but I really would like to get it approved uh, no later than October. My and I believe there's support. The board had already discussed support for adding the two holidays, and several districts in our area have. Uh, we couldn't do it this past year when we talked about it in June because the calendar was already set. So. How does this um, high school sports, how, because I know like field hockey, they had games during the day at the end of August. Like mm -hmm. how do, do sports play into the, the school? The PIAA like? sets the dates you're permitted to start and they're not, uh, those dates are the same no matter when you start. When you start, okay. Correct. The biggest challenge for the high school and there are some challenges with our special education services, that, and we can do another countywide survey, but we, we go to the tech school with, we share um, the JOC with Norristown and Upper Marion. They both start before. So our tech students uh, essentially started three or four days after, but we've come up with, uh, there's a plan to handle that. It's, it's not been a major challenge. Uh, for some IU services, uh, it has caused a couple questions, but not, you know, the last time we surveyed the county of the 22 districts, it was fairly split. I think it's now probably maybe slightly the majority is in starting before Labor Day. Um, but it's not overwhelming. Um, and I guess my other question would just be for the community that, you know, I know, you know, renting houses and things like that in the summer that I think when we switched to before Labor Day, how much notice? Like, I feel like we gave them a whole year's notice before the switch. We actually, yeah, we did it in March or April, right. a year, 15 months before. Like, I know, like, we and we did it for two years. Made summer plans already based on, you know, yep. still being after Labor Day, knowing sort of what our precedent my, is. My before. recommendation would be considering the, how, how the calendar lays out, would be post Labor Day start again. Um, and then we'll put together, we'll do a three year lookout. Uh, to see what it is. And I, I think going back district wide, the district has, at least in my long term here, has always stayed with the after Labor Day, unless Labor Day falls on like the, the, the sixth or the seventh. Right. Um, and I, it's been consistent for 20, at least 20 years. Do we have any, um, along the same lines of doing it after Labor Day, what attendance looks like on a Friday before Labor Day if you start before? Oh, we can go back and look at that. Because I would imagine that if, you know, people have plans, you know, they'll just take the day, and if that impacts negatively our attendance or what the instructional program looks like, it's probably not anecdotally um, beneficial anec to push it. True. And I can tell you where my son is in ninth grade. They went back three days before, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and he reported that just in his classes, like this, I'm not speaking for the whole district, but Thursday was not very well attended. And I'm pretty sure, like everybody said, that Monday, last day of school seems a little. That's a tough oh, one. That's a tough one. That's, yeah. So. I say after Labor Day. Very good. We'll put together, uh, I'll send something out to the whole board and uh, so that they have both copies and uh, we'll get it approved as soon as possible.
Yep. Uh, the next topic is, uh, um, you know, I'll let Lori uh, McCoy talk momentarily. Uh, the district uh, federal government for the past several years uh, during COVID has been supporting free meals uh, for schools. And we discussed this last spring that it would be ending. Um, we discussed, uh, we'd sent out multiple communications and, um, and it's been, you know, dis despite all those communications, it still was a surprise to some families. We certainly understand and there are hardships out there. Uh, and Laurie uh, put together a plan, even though we are um, no longer receiving the funding for the free lunch program, which is not free and reduced lunch. We still participate in free and reduced lunch. Uh, Lori put together a plan and we were using help from the Ed Foundation and some other resources to at least provide some free breakfast for those families in need. And the board was in support of that. And Laurie came up with that idea three or four weeks ago. And obviously, obviously Laurie can predict the future because Governor Wolf on Friday announced support uh, for um, free breakfast uh, for students, so and we qualify for that. So um, I want to commend Laurie uh, for uh, you know coming up with a creative way to uh, support our students. You know we're we're twenty three point nine percent free and reduced lunch in the district. So we have certainly with inflation and the cost of groceries, we cert we have families, we have all types of support programs with in addition to the foundation, but we still have families in need. And we also have families who just uh, just are above the threshold for qualifying free and reduced lunch. So because we have some of those creative things, and I'm not going to, I mean, this happened on Friday. So we're not going to have, Lori doesn't have a detailed plan tonight, but she immediately called me and said, all right, now we have to help kids with lunches since we already had this plan for breakfast. So. I've stolen most of your thunder. You have. Most um, of the words I that I was going to but that's, that's but, fine. Uh, quick, quick question before you move on to lunch. The breakfast that the state is providing, mm -hmm. do you have to qualify in any way? It's just for any kid? It's in for any child, regardless of whether they actually qualify for free, reduced, or paid. So it's almost a continuation of what was being offered yes. during okay. COVID. Thanks. And so... Yeah, I think um, Governor Wolf found out about our plans, and he thought it was such a great idea that he decided to to you, you have a direct to all you have a direct line across the state. He the must have been listening in when we were having our conversations because I read his press releases and I thought, hmm, that's exactly what me and Dr. Christian had talked about. Um, but so now we are proposing a change of plans, and we would like to repurpose those funds that we had designated to help cover our free bre breakfast to for assistance with lunches for specific families that are in need. Um, the funding we have obviously won't be enough to cover free lunches for everybody. But just as Dr. Christian mentioned, um, even though our free and reduced is somewhere around 24%, that's not really an accurate representation of the families that are in need. We had to date close to 100 families that have applied um, but were denied because their income levels were, were higher than the federal threshold. And in some of those cases, many of those cases, they were just slightly slightly higher. I've spoken to many parents who are still trying to recover financially from the effects of COVID. Um, they're laden with expenses and are dealing with rising food costs and struggling to help feed their, feed their kids. And I know as a department, we're here to help support academic achievement. And I also know that hungry students can't learn in the classroom. They're distracted. They have lack of concentration. I don't want to get into the weeds with how their brains require glucose to, from food sources in order to, um, to function. But so taking those things into consideration, the importance of meals and the fact that I've spoken to many families who are still struggling, we're hoping again to use these funds to cover lunches for specific families. And I did try to think about this weekend what parameters we could develop so that we could identify which specific families were going to help. And I know it's, it's up for discussion. One of the thoughts I had was possibly not reinventing the wheel and using the application process that's already out there and just taking students that are closest to that threshold. And again, with the funding that we have available, we would probably be able to um, provide a free lunch for an additional 325 students every day based on what we had set aside. So again, if we want to use that same process, really get that information out to parents and promote that there's an opportunity here if you want to go ahead and apply and we'll sit down and kind of um, hammer out the details that way and and see what we can get so that's kind of the thought process that we're at at this point would the would those lunches 
look like everybody else's lunches? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I think it's amazing. So thank you so much for for being so creative and for thinking so intentionally about this. Um, you know, I think we all agree. Like, it's not even a question that, we're, that we need to support our students with this. Um, my one wondering is just about the application process, and I just I, I constantly go back to, and I know we've had this conversation before um, with Ms. Lester about like access and and families. Um, like language access and and just having the ability to even fill out the paperwork sometimes um, and I just wonder like what other ways are there um, that, that we can lean into and before you before you respond to kind of piggyback off of that um, access to the application but also knowledge of the application and knowledge of the service and offering how will we make sure that parents that are in need right are aware that this is available to them um, so to answer the question about um, going back to language, so our application is available in 49 different languages. Um, it is online and we have paper copies available because we know some families just aren't comfortable with filling out the online um, application. And we did recently, Drew helped us in his department to create a tutorial, a video. So if people do want to fill it out online, it's step by step. Um, this is what you fill out in section A. This is what you fill out in section B. Um, we take applications down, paper applications down to the Colonial Neighborhood Council because we figure if families are coming there to pick up food and the kids are in this district, they might be able to just com complete it that way. Um, we've worked with principals and they've all sent out communication. We created a consistent message that every principal sent out this year in their buildings about um, applying for, for free and reduced meals. We have, um, if people reach out to us, we have our number on almost everything. Um, my secretary, Jen, in our office is a whiz at completing the application. She's walked a lot of people through the process. I'm trying to think what else we do. Jess, <laughs> right here, has been um, sending information out um, through various social media channels. Let's I'm just see. going to say we're going to a Concha Hawk and Fun Fest. I mean, and that's those community day events, we can yes. create um, flyers to bring with us too, mm -hmm. if, if that would be helpful um, to back again to, spread word. Yes, and back to school nights. Um, so we try as much as we can to to promote this. And I think um, uh, the fact that our you know free and reduced percentage is higher now than we've ever been before. Um, we probably either have more needy. It's probably a combination of having more needy families, but also hopefully we're hoping that we're getting the word out um, appropriately and getting. Often time, our school counselors, our school nurses will also reach out to families um, when they're aware. Oh, we send a connect ed message out. I don't know if I mentioned that just recently again as another reminder because we know that that connect ed message gets to all families. And Sharon, I can ask um, Joe Pacetti to talk with our ELD teachers. They often know the families, and either way, they can help get the translated applications out to the appropriate family. Did that answer both of your questions? Anyway, okay. Any other questions from the board about the food services? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, moving into communication survey. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the um, communication survey um, and the outcomes that we had kind of discussed at the end of the last school year um, and talk about our plans for moving um, some of that forward. So if you remember from the survey results, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't I feel like I figured we didn't need to go over them again, but um, in general, we, we can't, came out of that survey um, wanting to take a look at our website and how we can improve it and uh, perhaps uh, embark upon a redesign project. And then we also learned that um, many of our parents in the community would like a district app. So those were the two um, you know, big projects that I think came out of that. And um, Kim and I have kind of worked through a timeline to um, unroll or go through the process, I guess, with the community of looking at the website and then also thinking about what we might want in a district app. So I just wanted to share um, our thoughts for moving ahead with that. So um, we had about I think it was about 40 people express an interest in becoming part of a focus group. One of the survey questions was, you know, would you like to, to help us determine what, how we need to improve the website? Um, so we have, you know, a good group of people from across the district that we can choose, you know, or invite to come to these meetings. And um, I was thinking that we could have our first focus group meeting the end of this month on the 27th. If that works for everybody, it can certainly shift dates around. Um, and with, with that first meeting, perhaps we could get everybody in a room together and have some laptops set up with 
some examples of uh, school district websites, ours included, but other, other districts that, you know, we, we like their websites and have people kind of evaluate the websites and, um, you know, share likes and dislikes and then, um, you, know, you know, collect all that information and then um, Kim and I could take that back in terms of uh, working with vendors to, you know, get some examples from vendors as to what we could, um, and obviously we're going to go with, you know, look at final site as, uh, as our primary means since we're already with them, but um, we could certainly explore other um, vendors as well. And then we could, and then um, in October, at the end of October, maybe October 25th, um, we could have a, a second meeting with those focus group members again, um, have them look um, and explore with them what they would like in an app. And again, we could show different examples, have people evaluate the examples and, um, you know, take that feedback back with us. And again, as we're, you know, working with vendors, determine, um, you know, what, what templates might work best. And then some, maybe sometime at the end of January, we could, by the time we've communicated with our, our vendors and gotten some examples, and we could come back and show people, you know, a draft, and then again, fine tune it from there. So, um, and then I guess uh, some of the other feedback that we got from the last meeting was um, that, that uh, we wanted to get more student feedback because not a lot of students filled out the communication survey. So the other thing that we're planning to do is to speak with um, Dr. Bakani's Principal Leadership uh, Council in October to get um, some, some of the students' feedback from that group. And then we may work with um, uh, Mickey Engel to, to talk with his website design class and get their feedback. And also maybe put up some posters with the, with the QR code for the survey as well, just again, to get some more student in, input that way. So is there anything I forgot? Uh, potentially, with, <laughs> potentially we could also reach out to the tech school. Oh, they've that's got right, a, yes. They've got a big program there about mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. so. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that plan, and if everybody's okay with it, we can go ahead and you know we'll go ahead and move it forward. But yeah, I like the intentionality you have around getting student voice in. Um, having a QR code seems like a good idea. I don't know if it seems like a good idea to me. I don't know how <laughs> many of our high schoolers would like, oh, QR code. Let me do a survey. So I don't know if we can try to find a way to incentivize them. That's a good um, idea. Add some raffle option okay. to kind of get them to okay. actually you know do it. Um, but I think it's a good idea, and I appreciate being intentional about trying to get their, their voice involved. Question about the app. Mm -hmm. Was that a response of kind of a, um, a natural like comment response, or was that, that was a question on the survey, would you like to have an app, and they said yes? Yes, okay. yeah. Yeah, and I think we maybe discussed, you know, do, do people, you know, know what they'll get in an app, and um, and I, maybe we should have asked some more, you know, involved questions around that. But I'm hoping the focus groups will kind of help us to, you know, determine what what people would really look for and, and want to have in that feature. Any additional questions from the board? Okay, our last agenda item is an overnight student trip for the girls' basketball team. Uh, board approves all overnight and out of state trips. What we traditionally do is in early in the summer, we approve all the, the trips we know about. Uh, this one didn't come up until the other day. Our defending state champion girls were invited to play in a tournament in New York, and I am certainly not going to be in the one to deny them that opportunity. Uh, so it just it was just a recent offer, and uh, so we'd like to take advantage of it. Wonderful. Any other items? Any public comment? All right. If you have no other comments, we are adjourned. Thank you so much.